Rub your hands together for 15 seconds. What do you feel? Heat, right? Well, where does that heat come from? Well, we know there's this stuff called friction, and we know that your hands are moving, but how do we describe that mathematically? That's where the laws of thermodynamics come in. Thermodynamics is a field of physics that looks at the effects of work, added energy, and other factors into a system that change the temperature. In the example that we just did, the system is your hands, and you're adding energy to that system by adding friction. The energy that's added is called thermal energy. Thermal energy is energy that's moving from one object to another because of a difference in temperature. We talked about energy before, so energy is always measured in joules. Thermal energy is no exception. We need to define temperature. Temperature is actually the average kinetic energy of the molecules that make something up. So it's how much the molecules that make something are wiggling. Temperature has three systems of measurement, Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. Fahrenheit is the system that we use here in America. Celsius is more commonly accepted because of what it's based off of. Kelvin is the most scientific of the three. So let's compare our temperature scales. So Fahrenheit is what's used here in America, but Fahrenheit isn't very scientific. Fahrenheit was created about 200 years ago, and it's based off of the average human body temperature, 98.6 degrees. But back then, they only knew that it was 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So they made that the top, 100. In Fahrenheit, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. In the Celsius system, which is based off of the changing points of water, zero degrees Celsius is the freezing point, and 100 degrees Celsius is the melting point. Makes a lot more sense. Kelvin is the absolute temperature scale. At zero Kelvin, the average kinetic energy of the molecules in something is theoretically zero, so there's very little movement of the particles at that temperature. 273 Kelvin is the same thing as zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are the temperatures the water freezes at. 373 Kelvin is the same thing as 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the temperature the water boils at. So let's talk about equilibrium. Let's say I have two objects and they come into contact with each other. According to the laws of thermodynamics, those two objects will come into equilibrium meaning that one object will lose energy and the other object will gain energy. And at some point, they will have the same temperature. So this leads us to our zeroth law of thermodynamics. It says this, if two objects are at thermal equilibrium and one of those objects is at thermal equilibrium with a third system, then the other system must also be in thermal equilibrium with the third system. That's a little confusing, so let's look at an example. Let's say I have a pot of boiling water with a thermometer in it, and I add a piece of steel. We know that the water and the steel will come to equilibrium temperature because they're in contact with each other. If the thermometer and the water are also at equilibrium, that means that the thermometer and the steel are also going to be at the same temperature. So, there are three ways that we can transfer energy. Conduction, convection, and radiation. Conduction is the simplest one. Conduction is transfer of heat by contact. So an example of that would be when I'm not paying attention and I accidentally put my hand on the top of the oven. Ouch, right? I get burned because the oven is very hot. It's got a lot of energy. My hand is only 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, so when I touch the hot surface, it transfers its energy to me really quickly. Convection occurs in gases and liquids. When you look at a pot of boiling water, the bubbles come up to the top. That's because the heat is rising through the substance. You can also see it in an oven. When you open a hot oven, you'll feel a rush of hot air rise out of the oven. That's convection. We also see it in the atmosphere, which is why we get some of our weather systems. Last one, radiation is the transfer of energy through light. So the sun sends us an awful lot of radiation, and that's how we get the heat that we use to survive. So regardless of the method that you use to transfer energy, there's two important things that you need to keep in mind. Number one, none of these methods are 100% efficient. You're always gonna have some source of energy loss in there at some point. Number two, these are irreversible. Once something has radiated energy, you can't take the energy back. 
once I've burnt myself on the stove, I can't give that energy back to the stove and unburn my hand. It's an irreversible process. Moving on. Our first law of thermodynamics is actually pretty similar to us. It's based on the law of conservation of energy that I'm sure you've heard before. It says that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed. So here's what that means for thermodynamics. If there's a change in temperature in something in your system, that means that work was done on that. That means that there was a transfer of energy. And it's possible for us to trace back and figure out where that came from. So let's think about an example. I have a bike and I often have to pump up my tires. When I pump up my tires, I have to put a force on the pump and when I do that, some of that energy that I'm applying to the system is converted to thermal energy because of friction in the air and in the tube. So when I'm done, I will usually feel that the bike pump has become a little bit warm. Our last law is the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics states that energy always goes from the hotter substance to the colder substance. So if we have a hot piece of metal and we drop it in room temperature water, the energy is going to go from the piece of metal to the water. The water is going to gain energy and its temperature will rise, and the piece of metal will lose energy and its temperature will drop until they both reach equilibrium or when they have the same temperature. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video with us. We hope you learned something. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. For more awesome engineering videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.